Okay, welcome back to the show. Now, uh, on Friday's news file, Festus Abwaji spoke. Now, before I deal with it, I'll show you what he said. Lieutenant Colonel Festus Abwaji is a decent man. Uh, he's a former military uh, Lieutenant Colonel. He wrote a book that I was, uh, I was invited to the launch in 1999. That's a long time ago, isn't it? The book is entitled The Ghana Army, and, and we have used that book in preparing uh, our documentary about the history of the Ghana Army, uh, which we have been doing for a very long time now. Uh, Festus Abwaji himself was contacted by our team about, uh, about what he has to say. Somehow he didn't give us the interview, but that's okay, because he's written a book that we can read from. Uh, now, he's been talking on, he's, he's sort of an expert in security of sorts. He's been talking about uh, international security, and uh, he was invited on Joy FM's news file on Saturday to talk about Burkina Faso and Mali. And, uh, and the kinds of things he said are the reasons why we are here to do a rebuttal. Let's begin, uh, first of all, with the long one, uh, where Samson Ladi, the host, put a question to him after Festus Abwaji had ranted about the similarities of the things happening in Burkina and Ghana. How he was able, even able to look at similarities in the context of discussing a coup d'etat, I can't understand it. How he was able to see it as similarities. Then he hides behind military tradition and says that in the military, they are asked to check details. And so he is looking at the details of the uh, economic data and he's seeing in the details that some people are unemployed. Really? And therefore, there should be a coup d'etat in Ghana. Okay, go to Festus Abwaji's video, the one that uh, the host was asking him a question. Let's see that video now. In the midst of all of this and all the trouble that happens in Parliament, can't we say that a country like Ghana is safe from all of these, you know, military upheavals? We can't say that, Sam. So Why not? I'm sorry. Why not? Because I'm sorry our democratic system is is entrenched, is it not? It is not. It is not entrenched. In fact, I would argue that it is a veneer. You know, and as Professor Kwesiene suggested, you see, if you single out the causative factors, you may say that Ghana may not experience some of these upheavals. We may wake up tomorrow, and Wagadugu would have fallen to the jihadists. Mm. The jihadists will be closer to our borders. Even the current military coup could evolve into some kind of civil war mm. where another part of the military rises against the establishment. And therefore, we need to be concerned beyond what is going on in, uh, in, in, in Mali. Okay. But the other point is that, mm. you see, when we say that we are prosperous, our economy is doing well, a democracy and strength. It is not as simple as that. But in military studies, we are taught to pay attention to detail. Now, if people in this country cannot be paid, and you've just mentioned uh, the case of the lawyers, sorry, the lecturers, mm -hmm. if there is unemployment, as huge as Professor Christianian has suggested, the youth bulge and the youth unemployment, why on earth? Do we have a political class that shuttles around the world in chartered uh, planes? For instance, why do we even want to begin to talk about buying a new presidential plane? Why do we, for instance, want to start talking about paying first ladies beyond the 49,000 or so that is paid to the president when many millions of Ghanaians don't have the wherewithal to find the daily bread to put in their mouths. Okay. When schools are in dilapidated structures, children are lying on the ground to, to sleep. See, when you go into the details, you realize that this so-called prosperity is only for a few, mm. including yourself and myself. <laughs> the majority okay. of Ghanaians are <laughs> not part of that discussion. That's right. And we That's need right. to worry because mm. in a second, the emotions could go through the roof. Okay. Have you seen the dishonesty in Festus Abwaji's comments? Total dishonesty. He was clutching a straw when Samson asked him that we have an entrenched democracy. 30 years of constitutional rule for him means nothing. And you know why I say he's clutching a straw? Look at what he was referring to. Why are we paying first ladies? That dead story died a year ago. That story died a year ago. How did that story end? Social media reaction got the first lady and the second lady to say that based on the reaction of Ghanaians, we don't want this anymore. Is that not an expression of democracy that is really against the point Abouaji is making? Does that happen in Mali and Burkina Faso? 
You see the dishonesty. The guy is speaking as an expert. He goes for something that is now, as lawyers will say, a moot matter. It's a non-issue. He picks it up and tries to make authority and politicians look bad. That's the kind of people who analyze on our radio. This is Festo Sabuaji talking on last Saturday. Oh, this, this is not the time that the, this matter came up. First lady is being paid. So the second lady is came up. It raged out. First lady issued a statement and said, Ghanaians, I didn't ask for the money. A committee that was set up with parliament's oversight said I should get the money. If Ghanaians think that I, don't, I shouldn't get that money, fair enough. I am a public person. My husband is being elected by Ghanaians. We will do what Ghanaians want. How did we achieve that? Could we have achieved that in 1992? Could we have achieved that in 1994? No, we couldn't have. Not because we were bad people then, but because our democracy has evolved. And that's what Samson said, entrenched. Our democracy has evolved and some parts of it has been entrenched. Festus Abuaji, for his own parochial personal interest, comes and is using a matter that is moot, a matter that is dead, to say that Ghana is ready for a coup. This is the kind of thing I talk about. He must bow down his head in shame. And I'm wondering why the host did not tell him that what you are reciting is dead. First lady is dead. So he talks about first lady. And then as a military officer, this is the most embarrassing and disgraceful part of Festus Abuaji's commentary. Military officer, Colonel for that matter. You come and sit on public radio as a retired officer. You know the process that the Ghana Air Force goes through to determine how the president travels. You know, Festus Abuaji very well knows that the Ghana Air Force goes through a process. When the president is traveling, he's not our, when the president is traveling, he's not our, 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 our commodity anymore. He belongs to the Ghana Air Force. If you are president and says, I want to go to Togo, they, your ADC, that's why the president's aide de camp is a military brigadier general. That's the reason. The reason why every president in the world, your aide de camp is a military general, is that you have a lot to do with the military. Have we forgotten that he's president of Ghana and commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces? So the president's international travels, including even domestic travels, well, domestic is on the ground, so the military can handle, as soon as he's taken off, it's a decision for the Ghana Air Force. Festus Abuaji is a colonel. He's playing the populist card. He's playing into the opposition hands. This is what they do and they call for coups. Does he understand what coup is? He should understand it more than anybody else and says that what's happening in Burkina can happen in Ghana. What's happening in Burkina is to be condemned. Ghana is not, it's not a, a, a sacrosanct yet because there's corruption. Yes, there would be. Democracy is better and it's the democracy that has brought us to the point where he, Festus Abuaji, can sit on radio on Saturday and criticize the president's travel. That doesn't happen in Burkina. I have been in Ivory Coast in the the heat of the Ivorian Civil War, I was there and I saw what happened in Ivory Coast. And immediately I told the, the, my people, Kwesi Pratt was with us, I told the journalists that I now understand why there's a coup here. Because we asked for private media so that we can assess it. They said there's no private media in Ivory Coast, though. This is when Professor Mills was president of Ghana, 2010. There's no private media in Ivory Coast, there's no private TV, private, there's nothing. Everything is from the government, and that was Ivory Coast in 2010. And my, my friend, myself, and my journalist colleagues from Ghana and other countries who went there, those of us in Ghana were very proud of ourselves. That is that how next door Ivory Coast looks like in terms of its plurality? And Festus Abuaji has forgotten that it is because of the entrenched democracy. That's why you can sit on Joy FM on Saturday and criticize the president's travels, criticize anything you want to criticize. But you have to do that honestly. Don't come and tell us we are, we are living in a country, everybody is poor, and First Lady wants to earn more money. When you know, you know that this matter is dead. And it's dead because public sentiments got the political authority to respond. What else did Abraham Lincoln mean by government for the people, by the people, and of the people? What Lincoln meant by that is that you must have a government system, whether good or bad, that when the government does something, the people can respond. And that the government will be compelled to listen to the people because every four years, Every periodic period, five years, four years, six years, there would be an election. And that government would have to go through the election process. First of all, I just said worse things on Joy FM's news file. I'm going to show you. Let's go back to what he was saying. Criticizing election 2020. I don't even know where he gets that from. That can we beat our, 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 our chest and say that election 2020 was genuine? First of all, I just said that. Let's, let's listen to him. Mm. So when, for instance, the president used the principle of Freely, fair, transparent elections. Can Ghanaians really pump their chest and say that the last elections were free, fair, and transparent? Including even the election of the speaker in parliament, including the processes of voter registration. Can we really say that the elections were free, fair, transparent? 
have we consummated the outcomes of the elections? Mm. Why do we still have a pocket of citizens in this country who are disenfranchised? Yes, they don't sir. have any representation. Mm. Did you hear Festus Abwaje? Did you hear that? He says that election 2020 was not free and fair. Where is he getting these things from? And I, I'm surprised that people are not challenging him. What is the non-free and fair about the elections of 2020? Was election 2016 free and fair? Was election 2012 free and fair? Was 2008 free and fair? Was 2004 free and fair? Was 2000 free and fair? Will election 2024 be free and fair? How can I answer all of these questions in the affirmative? I can answer all of these questions in the affirmative because there's a procedure by which we run our elections and it's a procedure that we have all agreed upon. And where there's supposed to be ventilation of election issues, we all know in Ghana, they don't do that in Burkina Faso. They don't do that in Mali. When elections are, need to be ventilated in Ghana, it goes to the Leonard Supreme Court. We have done it not once, we have done it twice. First of all, wake up. You are a colonel of the army. Don't come and make such public statements and then talk, talk about coup d'etat. How can you say that election 2020 had a problem? The people of South who have not yet been represented, is it in favor of NDC or is it in favor of MPP? It is the process from the constitution where we create new districts. I, doesn't he know that? Yes, we all believe that the people of South should have had representation. But that what happened at South is not in favor of NDC or in favor of MPP. It's not in favor of anyone. It's a system that helps us identify the weaknesses in, in, in creating districts. So next time we are creating districts, we remember Sal. We'll make it better. Our constitution has evolved. That's the point Samson was trying to make. It's evolved from, we have come from Ghana where we have had opaque ballot boxes. I wish I, I got them to add that video. We've had opaque ballot boxes to transparent ballot boxes to voter registration with photo ID card, voter registration with color photo ID card, voter registration electronic, biometric voter registration. We should go and throw all these things away because First Lady wanted, wanted uh, a salary. We should go back to coup d'etat. Does he understand what coup d'etat is? First of all, Abwaji, has he forgotten what coup d'etat means? We should go back in Ghana to coup d'etat after consolidating 30 years of a democracy. Look at the various presidents that have been sworn in over the 30 years of democracy. Have a look. That I will uphold. That I will uphold. The sovereignty. The sovereignty. The integrity. The integrity. Of Ghana. Of Ghana. I will preserve. And that I will preserve. Protect. Protect. And defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. So, so help them. So help me God. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear. That I will be faithful. That I will be faithful. And true to the Republic of Ghana. And true to the Republic of Ghana. Protect and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. The Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And that I dedicate myself. And that I dedicate myself. To the service and well-being of the people of the Republic of Ghana. To the service and well-being of the people of the Republic of Ghana. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Ghana and allegiance to the Republic of Ghana as by law established as by law established <laughs> So that is 30 years of constitutional rule since January 1993. We saw in presidents from different political parties. We've gone to elections. Some of them have gone into second round. Some of them have not gone into second round. Some of them have been a first round victory. Uh, some of them, some victories have been bigger than others, but it's all a victory. And we have sworn in these presidents. This is what Festus Abadji thinks, that because the, uh, uh, the, the, the economy is either bad or that because there's corruption, or that because First Lady wants to, is taking some money, or especially that because the Ghana Air Force determines the way the President travels, which is a matter for Parliament to decide, no doubt about that, he thinks that we should have a coup d'etat in Ghana. That's what First Sabaji thinks. Let me give you a sneak preview of a coup d'etat. Sneak preview, small one. How coup d'etat okay? Have a look. 
I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed had to be avoided in this country, everybody might have as well realized that the ranks have borne the blood of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not stand in their way. Who did that came and Rawlings was announcing that some people want bloodshed. They want bloodshed and people were dying on the streets on Monday, June 4th, 1979. Festosa Boaji, you must have been a lieutenant by then. Go back to your notes as a platoon commander. Is that what you are asking for or because of your own parochial political interest you are making such irresponsible statements on radio about coup d'etat in Ghana? Are you making these irresponsible statements because of your own parochial interest? Or have you forgotten that when you were platoon commander and these things were happening, many officers didn't like it? Go back to Rawlings on June 4, 1979. This Rawlings again. Have a look. I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed had to be avoided in this country, everybody might have as well realized that the ranks have borne the blood of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not stand in their way. Did I also hear Festo Sabuaji talk about the election of the Speaker in Parliament as being, as being a reason why Ghana is unstable and that there should be a coup d'etat. What was the problem with the election of the Speaker in Parliament? The Constitution was obeyed. There's a clear constitutional clause. People will be nominated for the Speakership of Parliament. MPs will vote as the Electoral College for the rest of the country. MPs cast their vote. They counted their ballot. Alban Bagwin had won it. He was sworn in as Speaker. What is the problem with this? What's Abuaji saying about that? What is his concern? Is it that the soldiers tried to go into parliament because they thought there was a problem and they went in and then these people shouted that the soldiers should leave them alone? What is the problem with the video you are looking at? Does that happen in Burkina Faso and Mali? What is the problem with the video? Now, we as journalists were there till morning. It was eventful. It's historical. This is the first time that in Ghana, and it happens in America all the time, and we commend American democracy. Why can't we commend Ghanaian democracy when the Speaker of Parliament is elected by the minority? Why can't we commend that? Why is it not a commendation for Ghanaian democracy and it is a, a reaction or a reflection of instability towards coup d'etat? How is Festo Sabwadi reading these things? He cited Dr. Emmanuel Kusienin. Kusienin, please educate him better. I beg you, please. Educate Festo Sabwadi better. Let him understand the political science of the situation. Maybe he doesn't get it. He's just looking at it from one angle. What is wrong for me as a political science student? I saw the election of speaker as a feather in the cap of Ghana's democracy. It doesn't happen in Africa. never happened in Africa before. We always look at it happening in America. The Democrats have the House. The Republicans have the White House. The Republicans have the House. The Democrats have the White House. We celebrate America for that. It happens in Ghana and it must look Look like it is some untoward event towards democracy. Democracy is able to throw up all of these options. That is why it is unpredictable in terms of who is going to win. When democracy throws up an election, it's unpredictable. We don't know who is going to win. Anyone can win. Anyone who participates can win. Yes, we can do the analysis and say that CPP has a very small chance of winning and that NDPC has a very small chance of winning. NDC could win. MPP could win. Even pastors prophesied on day because of the lack of predictability of who is going to win. What is wrong with Alban Bagbin being elected as speaker from the minority side? Festo Sabwa just cited it about the election 2020. Are we confident about the election? What was wrong with the election that went to the Supreme Court? What was wrong with the election? Is it just because somebody says that I was cheated? Is that why an election is wrong? Is that why we are thinking coup d'etat? I just don't understand what Festo Sabwa is saying. Now, let me, let me show you one more thing. Uh, Festo Sabwa talks about the system in Ghana. Last Tuesday, uh, please put behind me the judiciary uh, one, the judiciary, Supreme Court last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, uh, just as I was about to render this auditorial, our reporters came to me and said that something has happened at the Supreme Court. Let me give you the background and go to what happened at the Supreme Court on Tuesday. And you will see that Festus Abuja's point is parochial. It is baseless. He has no facts to back it. 
that comparison of Ghana and Burkina Faso, that, that there's, there's corruption in Ghana before the Burkina Faso coup came. There's corruption in Ghana before the Mali coup came. Listen to Abuaji's words, that the factors that facilitated the coup in those countries or engendered the coup in those countries are present here. So we should be concerned. Why? President is traveling. First lady. Okay. Let's, let's go to the screen and see. Okay, so these are the facts of the case. In July 2020, the High Court of Ghana, Cape Coast, held that the said MP, which is the MP for Asin North, must not hold himself out as such and consequently annulled the parliamentary elections for the Asin North constituency. The embattled MP then appear, appealed to the Court of Appeal, which is yet to decide on the matter. Mr. Quayson, despite the judgment of the High Court, is still holding himself out as an MP. Now, this is a story you know about, and you know that this story is very important because of the uh, numbers, the closeness of the numbers best in parliament. NPP have 138, NDC have 137. So, on the night of the election of the speaker, you remember Alexander Fenyo Markin, to whom much credit has not been given, one of the best hard-working MPs of our time, young man, wrestles the seat in Winneba. MPP were never winning the seat in Winneba. In fact, MPP had never won it before. Alexander Fenyo, it was an NDC stronghold. So, it was a, it was a, it was a blue state. Afenyo Markin comes and turns it into a red state and is holding it so strong. Very clever lawyer. Afenyo Markin is the one who raised the point on the floor of the house on the night to the clerk that a sin not MP is here. He ought not to be here. Became, that's how come the soldiers came in. That's how come all the brouhaha occurred. Nonetheless, the a sin not MP, Mr. Kwesi, the Honorable Kwesi, was allowed to vote. After that, the court processes began. He went, he's gone to the high court, now the court of appeal. What we must understand is that in terms of parliamentary election petition, the final stage is the Court of Appeal. I have to make that point because in terms of presidential election petition, the only forum is the Supreme Court. So you have two stages in a presidential election petition. The, first, uh, the Supreme Court as a first instance, and then Supreme Court on the review. In the case of a parliamentary election, you have two stages. The High Court in the first instance, and the Court of Appeal as an appeal. So when you go to the Court of Appeal and you lose in a parliamentary election petition, that's the end of the story. In the presidential election petition, the story ends if you lose a Supreme Court review. So we need to know that at the back of our minds. So let's get back to the story. Okay, it continues. The government subsequently went to the Supreme Court to seek an interpretation of Article 9421A in, in effect to seek an interpretation of the word allegiance and to seek an order compelling Mr. Kwesin to obey the orders of the High Court. I think before then the Court of Appeal had ruled. Okay, the government argued that since Mr. Kwesin has made it hard for him to be served with the process, he should be served as an ordinary person. Okay, uh, let, me, let me give you more of the facts and the details. So, Mr. Kwesin lost at the High Court. He also lost at the Court of Appeal. And so right now, uh, last week, Tuesday, the MPP went to court, Supreme Court, to say that, dear Supreme Court, Mr. Kwesin has ended the journey of defending himself uh, that he is legitimately a member of parliament. That journey has ended because he has lost at the high court and he has lost at the court of appeal. Asking the Supreme Court, therefore, the, the, the MPP lawyers, to uh, injunct Mr. Kwesin from attending parliament and to write to the Electoral Commission to create a by-election. If Mr. Kwesin is not in parliament, the NDC will be 137. The Supreme Court was well aware of the political nuances of this case, the political underpinnings of this case. The Attorney General was there. But this is a democracy. This is Ghana. Let's go back and see the Supreme Court judges who took that decision. Uh, I hope it's here. Let's put it behind me very quickly. Okay, now they have it. Okay, the Supreme Court judges who took that decision are as follows. Justice Jones Doche, appointed by President Kofor so long ago. Justice Nene Amagache, appointed by Nana Dodanko Akufuado. Is Festus Abuaji listening? Listen, this is Ghana. This is not America. And this is not your Burkina Faso and Mali. This is Ghana where the Supreme Court is hearing a case and majority of the members of the bench are appointed by the president. They rule against the attorney general. Let's listen to it. This is just Tuesday. First of all, Baji should pay more attention to the good things happening in Ghana than focusing on something that doesn't exist. To say that Ghana is ready for coup d'etat, he should be invited by the CID to write because he has evinced an intention for it. He should issue a statement and say that he does not believe in coup d'etats. Then Amegacha, appointed by Akufuado. Move on. Justice Getu Tokonu, appointed by Akufuado. Distinguished Yoni Emmanuel Kulende, appointed by Akufuado. Uh, Justice Agnes Messi Abla Doji, appointed by Akufuado, I believe. Uh, Justice Mar Mariama Owusu is much earlier, I think. Um, Justice Professor Henrietta Mensa Bunsu, appointed by Akufuado. So the panel of judges, majority of them appointed by Akufuado, they were well aware that if I were Akufuado, I will welcome a Supreme Court decision that says that 
Mr. Honorable Kwesin should not be allowed to participate in the duties of the House because he has lost the ultimate appeal for an, a parliamentary election petition, which is at the Court of Appeal. That's the end of the matter. He's lost it. The Supreme Court are aware that Mr. Kwesin had been in court. He knows that he's lost it. What did the Supreme Court say? The Supreme Court told the Attorney General that we cannot give you the order because you have not served Honorable Kwesin. You have to serve him. Why haven't you served him? And then they said, we went to Parliament to serve him through the clerk. The clerk refused to collect the service. He said we should serve him through the speaker. We went there. The speaker had traveled. They said, well, Supreme Court said, well, you have to serve him. That's the procedure. The Supreme Court was making obeisance to the legal procedure because this is a democracy. Abuaji should understand that. Like Colonel Festus Abuaji understand it. Ghana is a 30-year-old democracy. Yes, we need amendments to the Constitution. We need a better livelihood for our people. We need politicians who are not fighting in Parliament. We need everything more decent. But we are not Burkina Faso and Mali. Don't come and sit on public radio and tell us that we are getting to coup because we are Burkina Faso. If you do that, then you have evinced an interest in the coup. You yourself, you need to answer questions. You yourself, Colonel Abwaji, you need to answer questions because by saying the things you said, you have evinced an interest in that coup d'etat you are looking for. It's never going to happen. That's your coup d'etat. It won't happen. What are you talking about? How can such an important person, a whole military colonel, come and sit on radio and talk like that when the host is prompting you? But can't you see that Ghana is a democracy and then you are still going on? No, no, no. Ghana is not. Please, let's play that video again. So the court ended by telling the attorney general that no, we can't, we can't give the order on Kwesin. Kwesin is still in Parliament. He was in Parliament today. The Attorney General now has to go and find a way to serve Kwesin. When did the court adjourn the matter to? They adjourned the Sine DA. That means they've adjourned it indefinitely. That's what the Supreme Court did. They didn't tell the Attorney General that, oh, Mr. Attorney General, you're our friend. So, okay, go and serve him and come back on Friday. They hit the thing on the table and said, court is adjourned Sine DA. Some people say sine die, but it's a Latin, so it's sine die. That's what the court adjourned unto, sine die. That's a democracy. It's only in Ghana that you find these things. You find it in America as well, but this is Ghana. Festus Abuaji must learn to appreciate what is happening. Get out of his parochial interest and stop talking like that. Listen to Festus Abuaji again. Play the one in which Samson is asking him questions. Play that one. In the midst of all of this and all the trouble that happens in Parliament, can't we say that a country like Ghana is safe from all of these, you know, military upheavals? We can't say that, Samson. Why I'm, not? I'm Why not? Because our democratic system is, is entrenched, is it not? It is not? It is not entrenched. In fact, I would argue that it is a veneer, you know. And as Professor Kwesiani suggested, you see, if you single out the causative factors, you may say that Ghana may not experience some of these upheavals. We may wake up tomorrow and Ouagadougou would have fallen to the jihadists. Mm. The jihadists will be closer to our borders. Even the current military coup could evolve into some kind of civil war mm. where another part of the military rises against the establishment. And therefore, we need to be concerned beyond what is going on in, uh, in, in, in Mali. Okay. But the other point is that, mm. you see, when we say that we are prosperous, our economy is doing well, our democracy is entrenched, it is not as simple as that. But in military studies, we are taught to pay attention to detail. Now, if people in this country cannot be paid, and you've just mentioned, uh, the case of the lawyers, sorry, the lecturers. Mm -hmm. If there is unemployment, as huge as Professor Kwesianian has suggested, the youth bulge and the youth unemployment, why on earth do we have a political class that shuttles around the world in chartered uh, place? For instance, why do we even want to begin to talk about buying a new presidential plane? Why do we, for instance, want to start talking about paying first ladies beyond the 49,000 or so that is paid to the president when many millions of Ghanaians... You, you heard Festus Abouadji, first ladies, dead story. A former military colonel knows that the Air Force makes the decision of the president. If we don't like it, parliament can change it. Parliament can tell the president that you can't travel in this way.
Festus Abwaji has evinced his own intentions. Now, I interviewed Professor Adai Mensah many years ago. Professor Adai Mensah is a politician. He was a former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, chemistry professor. He's a politician. He was a general secretary of the, the, the winsome and formidable People's National Party that won the uh, 1979 election after two rounds of voting to make Dr. Liman president. So Professor Adai Mensah belongs to the Liman party. He was his general secretary. Whatever good thing he says about Liman's party, you may want to take it with a pinch of salt. Because of who he is, I believe him. But he didn't finish there. Professor Adai Mensah also spoke about his opponent, about Prime Minister Buzia in the context of coup d'etat. That's sensible, that's wisdom. That's from the vice chancellor. That's how we build a nation. Listen to Professor Adai Mensah's advice. Those two people, if either of them had stayed in power without any military intervention, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. I will give that credit to both Buzia and Liman. If you look at the, uh, the things that they put in place to lead this country economically, socially, uh, uh, politically, everything, if things had been allowed to go, it's well. Of course, if, in the case of Buzia, I wish he would eventually have allowed the CPP also to contest openly and on equal terms in subsequent elections uh, so that he wouldn't be accused of having been handed, over, uh, handed power on a silver platter, you know, so that there would be real competition. Uh, in the case of Liman, everybody had a, uh, you know, the, uh, an equal chance to contest. But when you take the things that they sought out to do for this country, this country wouldn't be where it is at the moment. That was Professor Ivan Adai Mensah, the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana. That's the kind of advice he gave. It's past 11, so I'm going to uh, 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 call it, call it, bring the curtain down on the show. But that's something we need to go to bed thinking about. It will be on social media tomorrow, you can look at it. But that's something we need to go to bed thinking about. We shouldn't have our security experts, political scientists, go on radio and talk the way that Colonel Festus Abwaji spoke. It's very, very bad, and it's even clutching a straw when you're using stories that are dead to make the point that there's a problem in Ghana. On this note, I leave it here. Thanks for watching this Good Evening Ghana and Good Night. We now have freedom.